Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I'm here with a Zune HD from NVIDIA Tegra. And you can see it's got the uh, custom NVIDIA logo on the back of it. And uh, this is a review unit that NVIDIA sent me to test out the uh, Tegra graphics. It's um, a small, light, portable media player with 16 gigs of memory. It's also available in a 32 gig version. And I just wanted to show you uh, some of the features of the software interface. First of all, as you'll notice, it's sort of a very slick, zooming, uh, animated kind of interface here. And those animations aren't really going to tax the uh, processor very much because it uh, does have NVIDIA graphics and capabilities for uh, 3D performance. And just to show you some of that 3D performance, I'm going to load up one of the applications here. There, um, there aren't a lot of applications available, but they're all free. There's a couple of games, including some 3D graphics games, and a number of... Um, a very small number of other applications, including a calculator and a weather application. I'm really hoping that Microsoft opens up the Zune HD to third-party development so that you see more of a uh, platform similar to what you would get with the um, iPod Touch or iPhone. But for now, here's a 3D racing game, just to show you, again, realizing that I'm sort of in a glary room here where it's a little bit hard to see. So there's an accelerometer in here, so you can actually control the program, or control the uh, car by tilting to the left and to the right. And it looks pretty good. Um, again, because of the lighting in this room, you're getting a lot of glare, and you can't necessarily see all the colors. But let me take a shade down here and see if that helps a little bit. So there's one game. Let me show you a couple of other features of the... Uh, the Zune HD player. Exit. Okay, so on the main screen you've got music, video, pictures, radio, marketplace, social, podcasts, internet, apps, and settings. Uh, let's just go into settings real quick. You've got wireless. This is a Wi-Fi enabled device. Display. Um, you can adjust things like the uh, Brightness. Let's actually make this a little bit brighter, easier to see. Uh, clock. You can set the clock uh, format from 12 hour to 24 hour time. Adjust the time, etc. Um, there's some keyboard for the on-screen on -screen keyboard and so forth. Uh, under about, you can see storage. And on this particular Zune HD, yeah, you can't really see it, but uh, 390 picture or a song, seven pictures, and 28 videos using almost all of the available memory. Okay. Uh, under applications, I don't have all the applications available on here, but what I just showed you is the PGR Ferrari Edition game. There's also a Texas Hold'em poker game, a weather application. It does take a moment to load these uh, applications, and but once they do load, they work pretty well. So you see here I've got weather for two different cities, and I can go back and forth between them by swiping my finger. I can refresh, and that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get out of here. There's just a couple of buttons on the device. There's one here, one at the top, and this one at the bottom. Um, this one brings up a context menu for uh, volume, fast forward, pause, etc. The one down here brings you back to the home screen from anywhere that you are. And the one on the top is basically a power button. Right now I've actually put it into uh, sort of suspend mode as opposed to turning it all the way off. It takes a couple of seconds to resume from uh, turning off the, the device altogether. Um, when you do go into suspend, you get sort of this lock screen when you come back on with the time and a picture. And you just swipe up. And you can password protect that if you want to. Um, let's show you the music player, because that's obviously one of the main things that this does. The um, interface is nice. You can sort of scroll through. Now, I've got about 300 songs from a couple dozen artists on here. If you had more and you didn't want to have to scroll and scroll and scroll, you can also just hit a letter. You can see letter A here. And you'll actually get an alphabet. So I can just skip ahead to P and see what I have under P. So say I want to hear Poi Dog Pondering. It'll bring up the artist. 
and um, it'll actually grab backgrounds from the um, internet. So you've got background images of the artist. I can click the Marketplace discography down here, and if you're connected to an internet uh, connection, you can actually see other artists, or other songs, other albums by the artist. But going back to the uh, album that I have, I can hit play, and it'll start playing. There's no speaker in here, so you can't hear it, but trust me, it's playing. And again, I can pause, play, fast forward, adjust the volume, etc. Now, with each artist, you also get songs, pictures, so there's actually multiple pictures here. Okay, pictures, uh, biographical information, related artists, albums, and that's pretty much it. So there's a lot of information that is drawn from the Zune software and from the Zune Marketplace store. Um, as you may have noticed, one of the things I did to get uh, around here, so that was the music, music video pictures, but you can also scroll to the side and get another menu here, which shows you're now playing items that you've pinned, so you can make a favorite, sort of a quick playlist with artists, videos, etc. that you want to come to frequently, and your history. So you can see that I've recently played Poi Dog Pondering, uh, used the MSM weather application, and so forth. And then down here is a list of newly added media. So that's it for music. Let's take a quick look at videos, and I'll show you that I've got uh, some TV shows here that I've recorded using Beyond TV on my computer, and I've copied over. Um, now, the Zune HD can't handle every media codec that's out there, but it can handle um, it can handle uh, 720p video in H.264 in Windows Media, and um, so I've actually taken these videos as Windows Media files that it can handle, and I've copied them on over. Now again, because I'm using a relatively cheap camera and a poorly lit room here, uh, you can't see, but the color is quite vivid. Uh, there are a couple of ways to navigate. I can just sort of tap to move ahead three seconds, tap back to move back eight seconds, I can adjust the volume, or I can use this progress bar at the bottom to move around in the video as well. Only touchscreen displays uh, or controls. There's no way to navigate using the buttons. Now, there's several categories under videos. There's TV, movies, others, all. And um, one thing that's kind of nice here is that it will recognize under some situations if you have multiple episodes of the same TV series. So, example, for example, um, under Heroes, I've got uh, eight different episodes here. And I can click to play them all, or I can just click on an individual episode, play, rewind, pause, etc. So that's pretty much it for videos. Pictures, I don't actually have a lot of pictures on here right now. Um, but you sort of saw in the music section how the pictures work. You can scroll back and forth. And you can apply any picture as your background as well. Radio is a nice feature here. This is um, a high-definition radio, so you can actually switch bands from uh, standard to HD. And you can sort of scroll through until you find the station that you're looking for. There's also a web browser which you can use to load up web pages in a couple of different ways. You can use this, uh, hit the star button to bring up your favorites, or you can actually enter a URL using the on-screen keyboard. In this case, we went ahead and loaded one of my favorite sites, Lilliputin, and you can see you can actually adjust the um, display just by rotating it.
You can also zoom in, which is pretty important when the text is this small, using two finger gestures. And you can drag the screen left and right. And overall it works pretty well. The uh, keyboard could definitely be easier to use, but they did actually come out with an update fairly recently so that when you're in landscape mode instead of portrait mode, it um, the on-screen keyboard is a little bit wider, takes up the whole screen. So that should make it a little bit easier to use, but unfortunately, as you can see, it covers up most of the screen as well. So that's it. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputin, and that's a look at the interface for the Zune HD.